Hello people, in this video we want to look at radial nerve palsy which will cause wrist drop. Okay, so this is wrist drop. So you can see how the wrist of the right hand they have shown here, it is kind of dropped, right? So basically radial nerve is this nerve that is coming from your brachial plexus, isn't it? Look at this. So the radial nerve is the posterior cord of your brachial plexus. It's coming here and then you can see it is going behind the humerus like a spiral. There's a spiral groove where it's going and it's coming again in front of the lateral condyle of the humerus, right? So this is the path you should understand. And then it is supplying your hand also. So look at this, the right hand again, open your right hand like this and look here, this part of the thumb, that part radial nerve is supplying and turn your hand back, right hand back like this and see this part of your uh, right uh, hand is supplied by radial nerve. So imagine if there is radial nerve palsy. So basically anyways, what will happen, uh, what they are saying is wrist drop will happen. Wrist drop means the dorsiflexion is not working. Okay. Only palmar flexion is working. So hand has fallen down. Okay. Everything we are trying to show right hand only. Please understand with right hand. Okay. Now why does this um, wrist drop happen guys? See, um, the cause for radial nerve palsy, so it can be a fracture of the shaft of the humerus. So shaft of humerus is fractured, let us say, especially a spiral fracture where the junction between the middle and the distal third. So junction of the middle and the distal third. So you have to divide it into three halves. You divide the shaft of the humor into three parts. So this is the proximal, this is the middle and the distal third one third. So if there is fracture at the junction of the middle and distal third, this is called as the Holstein-Levis fracture. So this is called as what? Holstein-Levis fracture. In this what will happen? There can be radial nerve palsy. They have written in very fine print here. Let's zoom. Holstein-Levis fracture. So what is this fracture? between the middle and the distal third of the shaft of the <coughs> humerus where you have the spiral spiral fracture especially if there is a spiral fracture. So this will lead to uh, the spiral fracture will lead to radial nerve injury. This will result in the paralysis of the wrist, finger and thumb extensors. See more information they are adding here now as in when we go it will result in the paralysis of the wrist, the fingers and the thumb extensors. So everything is kind of flexed so you can understand right everything is kind of flexed the thumb also. The thumb should be flexed according to me. Let's check. See here the thumb, they didn't show exactly but thumb can be flexed, fingers also, everything paralyzed, wrist, fingers, thumb extensors. So when it comes to the causes, uh, this is one of the cause. So not just this wrist, finger, thumb extensors, even brachioradialis and supinator are affected. <coughs> okay. Even the sensory area is affected. We told you right, the back of the hand, your thumb and everything is uh, the uh, is supplied by the radial nerve the sensory area so all that is affected this one they have shown here right r so this area also sensation is affected so what are we looking at guys causes in causes we have seen one of them is uh, shaft of humerus fracture so what are we looking at wrist drop cause one of the causes shaft of the humerus fracture then we are continuing toxic agents toxic agents means injection of tetracycline can result in radial nerve palsy this is another thing toxic agent tetracycline the other one is it is also called a uh, saturday night palsy because like this they will drink and uh, once they are drunk they will pass out on the chair or something like this and uh, they will basically have compression of the radial nerve here so wrist drop okay so they will sleep over that. It is also called as honeymoon palsy because in honeymoon one person will sleep over or the, next to the other person with compression without realizing. So this guy is also sleeping. So basically this will lead to compression, right? So this will be Saturday nerve, Saturday night palsy, okay? Or honeymoon palsy or crutch palsy because people who want to walk, right? With help, they will use crutch like this under their... Uh, um, hand right they will use crutch so that crutch will put pressure so that can also cause this radial nerve palsy okay 
so you have understood the causes of radial nerve palsy can you say the causes of radial nerve palsy the causes of radial nerve palsy are fracture of the shaft of humerus then uh, tetracycline injection then you saw compression compression can be because of crutches or sleeping over a chair or that saturday night palsy or honeymoon palsy etc okay here they have not blamed any virus or anything looks like now let us look at the muscles which are uh, affected okay which cause this kind of state so it is the extensors of wrist which are affected obviously that is why the wrist is in flexion that much you understood right and the metacarpo uh, phalangeal joints also they are saying and is mainly will focus on the wrist so wrist extensors are affected so flex it is in flexed position okay so uh, which are the extensors the extensor carpi radialis longa longa so nice right the name is also radialis only so extensor so we know the extensor is affected something which is supplied by radius muscle so extensor carpi radialis longus okay that is one of them so many are there okay uh, we will only look at uh, some easy ones then extensor digitorum see extensor digitorum is supposed to extend right uh, the metacarpophalangeal joint etc so here what will happen uh, extensor digitorum is not working so it will be flexed okay so extensor carpi radialis longus extensor digitorum these are actually impaired then guys based on the muscles that are affected there can be uh, or at the level at which the radial nerve is affected there can be high radial nerve palsy or low radial nerve palsy in high radial nerve palsy if triceps is affected then it is a very high radial nerve palsy okay in low radial nerve palsy it is saying that some muscles are spared okay but it's not very clear so anyways remember radial nerve palsy also has high and low just like how ulnar nerve had right high radial nerve palsy and low radial nerve palsy is there okay now let us go to the treatment of radial nerve palsy come on if it is because of compression no you have to just wait i think it will get fixed right if it is because of neuropraxia it may get fixed right otherwise if it is fracture and all that what you will do you will have to do some jones transfer this is the name jones transfer is for radial nerve palsy can you say jones jones transfer transfer radial nerve palsy radial nerve palsy say jones transfer Okay, so what do they do here? So they are using some muscles of the forearm to substitute the wrist extension. Okay, because you want wrist extension is flexed, right? You want the wrist to get extended. So they are using some other muscles, which will help in wrist extension, finger extension, and thumb adduction extension. So everything that was flexed now they want to bring it back. Okay, so which are the tendons used? PT that is pronator teres they will use flexor carpi ulnaris palmaris longus okay so instead of this extensor carpi radialis brevis they are using this is it or they are, and then extensor digitorum which we said and extensor pollicis longus for the palmaris longus 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 they have put okay teres they have put for brevis see this pronator teres is there here so for the brevis extensor carpi radialis brevis they are using this one they connecting that looks like then see this extensor carpi radialis brevis is not there in the photo in that longus is there for brevis you will connect this pro pro pronator teres flexor carpi ulnaris for digita extorum where is flexor carpi ulnaris can you see flexor carpi ulnaris yes yes we found it here it is see flexor carpi ulnaris so the flexor of the fingers they are connecting to do this work is it and then palmaris longus extensor pollicis longus pollicis is what thumb jones tendon transfer guys you'll have to remember this much if it's possible so basically the same thing only we have written here shaft of humerus if it is fractured so you will have to treat so jones transfer tendon transfer same thing we have written here so we have already covered this then there are some splints cock up splint is for radial nerve palsy okay cock up splint for radial nerve palsy so now let us take a recap in this video we wanted to look at what radial nerve palsy uh, is basically radial nerve is affected so what will happen the person will have wrist drop so radial nerve comes from your brachial plexus posterior cord it goes like this in the spiral groove and it comes in front of the lateral uh, epicondyle right of this uh, humerus so <clears throat> and then it supplies the 
hand also in hand it is supplying your um, this part of the thumb this is sensory supply and this is the dorsum of the hand and it will also supply a lot of muscles <clears throat> so what happens when there is a radial nerve palsy there is a weakness of the dorsiflexors okay <clears throat> and uh, when dorsiflexion is not working what will happen see dorsiflexion is not working so the hand will fall like this okay that is palmar flexion so it's called as wrist drop so what causes this uh, uh, radial nerve to get affected can be the shaft of humerus fracture especially this holstein levis fracture so holstein levis fracture means uh, uh, between the middle and the distal third the, there is a spiral fracture so the radial nerve can get affected here so there will be paralysis of the wrist finger thumb extensors brachioradialis supinator etc even the sensory area like we so showed you of the hand can be affected okay so uh, this can also happen radial nerve palsy can also happen because of tetracycline injection and it can happen because of saturday night palsy compression honeymoon palsy and then uh, crutch crutch palsy etc so this is one thing you have to know now the muscles which are affected are the extensors of the wrist obviously the extensors are affected so the hand is in flexion the mp joints also are affected they are saying <coughs> so basically you have to uh, see which muscles are affected the extensor carpi radialis longus then the extensor digitorum and many other muscles are affected and um, uh, there is something called as high radial nerve palsy where the triceps can be paralyzed and there is low radial nerve palsy then um, uh, radial palsy how will you treat you will if it is because of compression etc like uh, saturday night palsy honeymoon palsy crutch palsy you just uh, decompress weight kind of a thing then um, you will treat the neuropraxia basically then otherwise uh, if it is fracture and if everything is affected then there is something called as jones transfer in jones transfer you will uh, basically uh, the muscles of the forearm you will take and you will um, substitute it for wrist extension finger extension and thumb adduction uh, extension so these are the tendons used pronator teres extensor carpi radialis brevis flexor carpi ulnaris to extensor digitorum palmaris longus to extensor pollicis longus looks like so if somebody asks you which are the muscles affected these three muscles itself you can write extensor carpi radialis brevis uh, extensor digitorum extensor pollicis longus etc actually even longus is affected here isn't it so uh, pollicis is the thumb okay then uh, there is also splint for radial nerve palsy that is the cock up splint okay So that's all for now in radial nerve palsy guys bye bye